Well, Haiti. Haiti. Well, howdy. I want to draw some more of my sketchbooks, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. Conveniently. <laughs> Let's open up to a blank page. Beautiful. Now, last week I drew T-Rexes, and I mentioned that I would probably like to draw some Stegosauruses as well. And you know what? I did not lie. I still do. So, that is exactly what I want to do today. So, if you're interested, I hope you grab your sketchbook and uh, draw along. Ooh. <laughs> So first I'm going to, actually no, 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 I lied. First I'm going to draw without a reference, just to kind of see where I'm working with it. I just think it's fun to do that and see the difference when I use a reference versus when I don't. Because as much as you think you know what something looks like, there's little gaps in the brain. It's missing something and we're going to figure out what that is when it comes to stegosauruses. So I've got a, actually I have it out. This is just a random pink mechanical pencil, but I filled it with some pink graphite. There's a creepy spider on my ceiling. <gasps> He's moving! He's going right over me. I gotta be my own hero. Oh, he's just a jumping spider. I freaked out over nothing. Watch him jump. Look, he's like a little jumping bean. Do it. Do the thing you were doing. There he goes. Oh. He can go exist someplace else. All right, he's gone off to freedom, but he left a bunch of web. Anyway, we haven't even drawn anything yet, but now that my life isn't in danger, we can continue. Let's draw our little Stegosaurus. From what I remember in the old membrane, they have like a really big booty and the legs, probably kind of similar to a T-Rex, but like more soft, I guess, less severe. And we'll give him a little like foot. And then his front is like smaller than a tail. Oh, I didn't leave room for a tail, did I? Well, it's got spikes on it over there. And he's got little smaller legs here. I don't know how long they are. Make sure he's properly proportioned there. And then the head. I remember reading, I, I have this visual of like a cartoon where they like zoom in on a stegosaurus and they're like, his brain was the size of a peanut. And it like shows the inside of his brain and there's just a peanut in there. Don't know if I made that up. It's a memory of mine. What if I turn the tail? That's a little too severe, isn't it? So I assume that means they had a pretty small head. Let's give them those like wrinkles like the T-Rex had. So that was fun. I'm just gonna need back leg. And then of course, there's those plates on his back that look like pedals. Not sure if they get like smaller near the head or something. And I think there's two rows of them. Wonder if I made the neck too short again, like I kept doing with the T-Rex. Tried to make him look like he's smiling as well, cause why not? Who could be happy dinosaurs? Last time uh, when I did the Tyrannosaurus Rex, I only used like some very subtle marker for colors, but this time I definitely want to try exploring using more colors. So I'm using a colored pencil instead, just so I can layer markers when I choose. Let's find that reference. Ooh, hey. All right, so I found this guy. And you can kind of see I was on the right path. I like the way you can see more wrinkles on this one. So I definitely want to incorporate more of those. So I'm going to just draw this reference straight up. And we can like see the difference just in my style of the two. So I was right about like the front shoulders being shorter. But I don't think I got quite the extreme shape of it. So if we're going to fit everything in here, I'm going to have to kind of figure out where I want everything. <laughs> okay, that actually puts the tail off the edge. But that's probably fine. So basically, there's a tiny little head here. And he's kind of like a square with a little circle circle. Kind of like what I did. I did like a straight line on the top of the head. That's kind of similar, but it doesn't go straight up. There's a neck section first and then this kind of goes up and then down and then there's the neck flap. And then the back hip is up here and that's when it starts moving upwards. And there's the eyeball. <laughs> that don't look right. Oh, there's actually like almost a beak thing. Ooh, that's cool. Now this leg actually looks very similar to the one I drew. And there's like a curve here to the hip and then there's extra flesh there. Then these little things look like they get really small along the neck and then they grow and get really big. They're very pedally and they get kind of small over there. There's like a knee thing here. Obviously most dinosaurs are going to have artist interpretation because no one's really seen one in real life. But for this reference, this is about how it looks. I think I drew this thigh too big. It gets a little closer in the knee right here. Kind of like goes up towards the tail. The tail's actually even longer than I sketched it, so we're gonna have to <laughs> go a little further here. Luckily we have the space, and that's about where it is. Hey, what's the difference? Do we see a difference? I definitely forgot whatever this booty section is. It would like come up that way more. Love the like, this like wrinkle stuff. Right, and then we need tail spikes. You know, the main attraction. <laughs> and the tail actually goes out beyond that. 
This dinosaur takes up a lot of space and I was not prepared. I was not prepared. Now these, I forget what they're called, but they're much more triangly shaped than I drew them. So there's like a triangle there and this blobby thing. And it kind of curves down like a teardrop a little bit. And it kind of fans out from there. And then this one's gonna be a lot smaller. I'm gonna continue this way. This area still feels wrong. So I think I didn't draw this space large enough. I can just shrink that leg a little bit maybe. <laughs> just try to add some dinosaur texture. Kind of actually has a little indent before the foot in this one. I'm gonna exaggerate that because it's cute. Oh, it's so cute. And this is where like the kneecap thing is. Blend that out a little. <laughs> that work? I guess we need some more of these. It's kind of small. There. Ooh. And also, last time I forgot to collect my references, but this time I will. So if you're looking for the references I'm using, they will be linked down below. I apologize. <laughs> All right, I think I can say that's a definite improvement. I do want to just add in the other legs. <laughs> I guess they'd probably be back here. Oh, that actually went very smooth. Okay. Now a lot of this pencil is kind of going to blend away into nothing when I start adding in color. But for now, there's the sketch. Should I follow the colors on this? I'll, I'll follow the reference. If that bores me too much, next time we'll switch it up. Basically, we need some greens, beiges, and like browns, I'm thinking. We can swatch some of these colors. Ooh, that looks useful. We need something very light. It also needs to be kind of yellow. What about silk? Ooh, that's good. We also need something that's like very light and green. Don't have a lot of greens. Let me try my oh hoo oos Ooh, that looks useful. That I think will come in handy. So I've got like these colors. Look at that. Don't they look like a steggy already? So I think what we should start with is our lightest and just kind of like layer over everything. It's gonna end up being kind of pink because of the pink pencil. You could probably combat that just by kind of rolling over it a little bit just to kind of pick up a lot of the loose color, but not too much where I can't see anything. Now we're gonna layer everything with our eggshell marker. Oh yeah, watch that stuff just disappear. Goodbye. Not sure if I should layer it over the plate or not. There we go. There's our first little bit of color. Probably color these guys. All right. Now I think we're going to move on. I'm going to keep this out for easy blending and I'm going to grab this yellow gray. Kind of build up some tones at the bottom of the feet. So like in this area while at the same time kind of creating that dinosaur texture I'm looking for. There's <laughs> also the color of these things. I'm sure there'll be more layers on top of that. So I'm just going to kind of quickly throw it down to see what it'll look like. Same thing with this foot. All right, that's a lot of the green. We also need the darker green and create a little bit of shading or a new texture that kind of goes along the outside edge of this and then comes inwards. It's a little bit trickier because this nib is kind of busting a little bit. A little overused. Might be some more of this like here too. Okay, let's grab that brownish red kind of color. Added some more of this. Actually, I think I'm gonna need something darker than that, but I don't think it'll hurt to kind of throw some in anyway. Kind of throughout the back as well. Just use dots, I think. Some pointillism. Maybe another layer. Go a little further down. Shading. I think I'm gonna grab a purple for shading. This isn't quite cutting it. It just looks too much like texture because there is so much of that going on. Actually, let's grab this silk color and blend around the edge here. Really build up some color. Kind of throw this a little bit of everywhere. I like the way it's building on top of all of the colors. Got that yellow gray. Add something back here. I think we're getting near the end here. I can leave it kind of pastel or we can start following the reference a bit closer and add even more depth. We just need something a little bit cooler and a little bit darker. Let's try Carib Cocoa. Let's try it. I basically want like really fine lines with this. So I'm going to try to be super light handed. See how well that goes. Hmm? It's getting some contrast in there. I just use this as like a liner around these things as well. I want to just go everywhere at this point. Nothing's stopping me. And it kind of just kind of ties it all together, makes it more cohesive. How's that looking? I do want to do something for the little toesies if you can't really see them. Boop, boop. Better? Now the thing about doing line art with a cover marker is if you do end up adding any more color on top, it can blend out and kind of disappear. So you gotta make sure you're ready. I think the last thing I want to do is just add some purple shadows. Not too saturated. Maybe this viola color. That could probably work. So I'm gonna first just deepen up these areas where they're not gonna get as much light. And back behind the feet. I'll also create like a shadow <laughs> underneath this guy. Let's do like one side of these just to give them some dimension. 
Let me blend that little piece out. Make it a little less purple. There we go. There's our very first stego. <laughs> Still could use a little bit more warmth up here. But yeah, maybe next time I should just do a purple one. <laughs> this one looks more like Godzilla on all fours. And this one looks more like a stegosaurus. Definitely didn't make this section wide enough. But I think the rest looks pretty good. Just checking out the reference. Let's find another one though. Actually, do I want to try and draw one from memory? I also kind of want to exaggerate the shapes a bit more. So like what we've got the big... <laughs> Her, the head with the beak thing and it's got the space for the eyeballs that would be like the head and it's got a pretty long neck with little spikers and this is where we would have the little legs popping out and this would go up significantly high before we see this leg and then there'd be another one here approximately <laughs> what is happening here these are confusing little creatures i mean they're not that little but still with the little kneecap oh those are cute and then this one has like back kneecaps little toes I want to make him smile though. How do I do that? Eyelashes? <laughs> Don't know where that came from, but there they are. Got a little tail in there with spikes. A little eraser. What do we think? Kind of looks like a funny little salamander or something. And I underestimated how boring drawing these little things would be. I thought they'd be fun because they're kind of simple and you just draw a lot of them. But forgot that's exactly what kind of bores me. Drawing the same thing over and over again. Not bad. It's still an improvement over that guy. This is grounded in some kind of facts. <laughs> face a little bit. Let me try the face. The little beak thing. I kind of forgot how I drew the T-Rex already. I feel like that could come in handy with the face. Even though they're slightly different, there's still similarities. I'm feeling them, but I can't quite capture it. You know what I think I need? A reference of just the face. Oh, one from the Jurassic World Evolutions game. Of course. Also becoming in very handy. Maybe we can do it up here. Maybe small heads, to be honest. Start with a circle. So this is like, that's like that thing in the T-Rex. A little extra piece on the back. Then it has a piece that connects there. And this is where like the eyebrows are and the eye hole cavity. Don't be such an eye hole. <laughs> <laughs> that's the eye. There's like kind of in shadow here. It's kind of the nostril. Then there's that little beak thing. So when the mouth's opened. Oh, I did not leave enough space. Moved in nostril. Such a tiny little mouth. So small. Especially after drawing like the T-Rex. Look that like. There's this whole section kind of here. Goes to this jowl. Is that what that's called? Actually, this little tip seems wrong. It needs to all be higher up. There, does that look like a dinosaur? <laughs> Nothing missing, right? What do we think? It's still really confusing to me, to be honest. I think it's because it's so different from a T-Rex skull. And I just spent so much time drawing T-Rexes. <laughs> I want to kind of just go over that same sketch again. This is the reference I was using, by the way. This guy. <laughs> that face from the video game Jurassic World Evolutions. Instead of drawing it over again, before I do that, if I choose to do that, I want to go over it just with pen and kind of like reiterate, reiterate, reiterate the lines. See if I can get a better feel for it. So there's this section and there's like the eyelid. And that's where the pupil's in there somewhere. And there's a lot of like eye flap. <laughs> From this section, there's actually a little bit of something. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I drew it in. Oh wait, actually this little eyelid piece kind of comes around like this, and that's where this shadow is. Comes around like that, creates this shadow, this shadow, and then comes back up. A little hatching of this one. I don't want it to be too severe. And that bottom jaw, it's a bit more squared off than that. Okay, there we go. I do want to actually add a little bit of color like I did with the T-Rex with the colorless blender. Kind of go over the deepest areas. Just kind of like eyeballing it really. Ooh, it's that purpley dinosaur I was looking for. <laughs> okay, that study definitely helped me kind of figure out what the face looks like a lot more. Now I actually can see it. Find another reference. Oh my gosh! Look at this by Alberto Camara. Ah, it's a baby stick. I can't, I can't. I like the way this artist simplified the idea of a stegosaurus and, um, I don't know, cartoonified? What's the word? <laughs> Exaggerated some of the proportions and minimized them at the same time and then it, it looks really good. <laughs> I really want to color another one. There's not really space for it. I'd have to draw, like, really small. <laughs> hmm. I'll redraw this face. Find the roundness of it maybe will help. 
just trying to kind of figure this out still. As much as that helped, I'm still a bit overwhelmed, I guess would be the word. Make mine smile. I like when they smile. Actually, can I exaggerate this like Alberto did? <laughs> they brought the smile all the way to the eye. Actually past the eye. Kind of more similarly to a T-Rex in that way. And there's that little extra bit. Broken pencil. <laughs> there's that little extra bit. Can I throw a leg in here? The other leg would be like here-ish, I think. I think this leg needs to be moved over here a bit, but I'll leave it for now. I would really like to try to draw a really simplified version. See if it's possible. <laughs> Take what I've learned so far, at least. What am I thinking? Maybe less of these things would simplify it a bit. Maybe make the eyeball bigger. So it has to have that like section that casts that big shadow. Kind of shortened the snout a little. Hopefully that doesn't make it look like a different dinosaur. I'll stick a tongue out. Why not? <laughs> Jaw. Neck wrinkles. Don't like the smile. It's going. Goodbye. This is harder. I don't know if it's because I've just got less experience. I've never drawn a stegosaurus before today that I remember. It didn't probably look like this. To be honest. Oh, wait, spikes. I wouldn't have forgotten the spikes. So from that, I say there's improvement here. <laughs> we only have a little bit of space left. I think it's just the proportion of it doesn't really work with how I like to lay out a sketchbook. Give it a little anteater face. Let's give it a little tail with our spikes. <gasps> what if we make them a funny shape like this? I mean, I guess it's kind of similar to what they're supposed to be. But hey, okay. Wait, I'm being rejuvenated. What is this? Sometimes you just gotta keep drawing till you find that spark. It's a little bit like an anteater. I'm gonna color this in. Let's just use the colors I already have out. Start with that eggshell. Layer over everything. I might throw the uh, purple pen on top as like a little final detail. Then I think I used the little green on these things. I think I used the green one for even more depth or something. I'm gonna use this purple for shading. That looks cool with the purple. I'm gonna grab that purple pen. Add in like a line art of sorts. There we go. I feel like that proves that I was able to draw some form of stego without a reference. This one still looks just too angry. I wonder if I could go over it with the pen and brighten it up a little. It's a little happier little guy. Okay. There's technically a little space up here. I wonder if I can draw a sitting stegosaurus. Kind of like that adorable one I showed you earlier. A little circle for the arms. And it's just huge back here with the kneecaps, you know. The eyes need to be cuter. What if we do like really huge pupils? I think it needs to look like it's smiling. It has to be cuter if I'm going to exaggerate <laughs> the pose like this. We could do little teeny tiny eyes. Sometimes that's cute. Maybe blobfish eyes? Oh dear. <laughs> uh, the eyes look like they're a little too bulgy for this. Okay. I'm really inspired by this idea. Um, do I have space? Maybe I'll have to turn the page. I'm gonna grab the pen though. Sometimes I skip sketch this sort of thing better than <laughs> I'm just looser and quicker that way. What if I try and draw him standing up? Got that big hip, little arms up here, little neck with his other head. Other head? No, the only head. You just kind of like saturate this idea. Kneecap, tail, kneecap, toes. I'm gonna tone the eyes down a little bit on the blub. There he is standing up. Doesn't really suit the species, but I also think it's loosening me up a lot more. And I feel like I could draw the Stegosaurus again. Let's try another one. <laughs> Cute. It looks a little bit like Scrat. Not sure where that came from. His back feet are a bit thick, even for my liking. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's getting weaker. I'm definitely exaggerating things and finding like interesting shapes in there, but the overall appearance ain't that exciting. I like that one better actually. Hmm. Why does this look so angry? It looks too T-Rexy, honestly. That like shape of this thing, I think. Hey, I like that actually. <laughs> What's that? Where'd that come from? Since I like it, let's throw in a little colorless blender, make it pop a little more. Let me throw in some Hoska. Try and make him look a little happier. So add that like dinosaur texture. Okay, I really like the shape I found there. I also still like that one too. This one, me too squirrel, I guess. Okay, I think we've reached the end of this. I'm getting a little uh, antsy with these sketches. I think what I need to do is find a reference and just draw lighter. I think I'm going in a little too dark. Build it up slower this time. Well, we're not gonna have room for the tail again. You know, that's just the way the stego crumbles, I guess. That's the back leg. Tail goes that way. So it has like an eyeball there. This one uses like little dots around the eyes. That kind of makes it look less like a, a T-Rex, which is helpful. It goes real high through the booty. Joins the tail down there. 
Wrinkle time, my favorite. <laughs> we'll go and add these in. It's almost like the rib cage. Back foot back here. Lots of stuff here. That kneecap back here. And then there's this kind of section with the toes. Okay, it's better than that thing. <laughs> okay, we'll add a little, uh, a little blender to this too. Add a little shading. Push the shadows and all that jazz. Use the chisel for some reason. Don't know, just felt like it. <laughs> Hey, stego my ego. Lego my stego. I love the like curvature of this one. It really gives it a lot more life and like movement. Just a little extra shading. I really like that one. That's my favorite from memory. I also kind of like this one. It's got some charm. I like the idea of the like shorter tail and the little blobby arms. And this page, oh I do, oh I forgot about that kneecap thing I like. Be happy with that one. This is probably the star of the show. I love all the texture and the hue shifts. They're really cool. This one's actually annoying me a lot more than I realized. So I'm gonna just grab a sticky note. We'll just pretend this one never existed. We'll just draw something cute and quick. We need a head, eyeball, neck, torso, little arms, little tail, these little thingies, of course. Wherever they're headed off to in the distance. Give him a white eyeball. He's kind of got a glitter to him. I want to try that again, actually. I'm gonna draw this one again. Let's see if I can draw it cute. Again, did not leave any room for the tail. Had the dino spots. Okay, successfully hid my least favorite sketch of the day. So I will call that a success. <laughs> so I actually filled two spreads in my sketchbook today. That was not the intention, but it kind of went a lot quicker than I was expecting. I don't think I was putting in the same, like, love and attention that I did into the T-Rexes. Maybe because those are my favorite dinosaur. Who really knows? Sorry, Stegosaurus. <laughs> I actually have a larger white Posca. Can go around this character. There we go. I do really like that one, actually. That one's growing on me. Anyway, I hope you had fun sketching along with me, and I'll see you guys all next week. I hope you have a delicious evening. Full of levels. Bye.